team, today we will discuss how we could implement integration between Salesforce and Splunk. Actually, implement that integration via platform events and event data capture. So, what we could actually do in Salesforce site is we have two possibilities for us to start capturing events. First of them, it's event data capture, which is working based on standard and custom Salesforce objects and platform events, which is could be working based on our custom data. So after event, what we will need to do is uh, prepare event trigger because when our event bus will capture those events, we will need to have trigger to perform any kind of actions that we would like to perform. And here, what we could do is in this event trigger, we could connect with Splunk via HTTP event collector. And by this way, in our JSON that we will send to Splunk, we will be able to send actually any kind of data that we want. So here you could see an example of JSON that we just sent to Splunk from Salesforce and uh, how a lot of data it has. So here also Salesforce system automatically will capture event uh, of registration, our platform event or event data capture in the event log file. It will be done automatically. So let's let us also check another way of implementation. It's implementation via actual event log file. So in case that Salesforce anywhere register our event trigger and our platform event and event that it captures in event log file, so that means that in, in Splunk we could install um, Salesforce add-on. And by this add-on, what we could do is we could automatically set up integration via event log file. By this way, we will be able to actually grab event logs from uh, Salesforce directly with uh, our add-on. Also, one additional way what we could do is uh, we could run on Splunk Python script, and this Python script will be automatically grab event logs files from our server. But here we have a couple of problems. First of all, as you could see, when system uh, capturing in event log file platform events and event data capture, uh, it capture it in the following view. Like it could understand uh, URI that was used, it could understand session key, login key, and a lot of different information, but it could not actually capture all this information that was sent in this event. So the same kind of situation we have for event data capture. So here everything like the same. So we got a lot of information about this event, but like nothing what was inside of it. So in general, this information not like very useful because we get just general information when it happens, uh, what is was uh, session ID for user who did it and stuff like that. And uh, also in the event log file, we could see event of registration, uh, our event trigger. And how it looks like, we could actually see event type that is Apex trigger and we could see here trigger name, we could see our entity name, we could see also trigger type, for example, that is after insert, but also here we could not see any kind of that data that was actually used in the event. So by this way, we could see that uh, this way of uh, implementation of that integration is not very useful unless you would like to see any kind of this data in your and also here we have additional notes about uh, this chapter that we just described that uh, first of all change events trigger work on all actions on delete create update and all others so there will be no limitations so any kind of uh, process that will be initiated by this uh, trigger will be working under automated process user only so by this way, if you will need to get any kind of debug logs for that user, you will need to debug automated user. Also here we have some additional items that we should use in unit tests, like test enable change data capture or event bus deliver for us to be able to cover that kind of uh, implementation with unit tests. And uh, there are some additional information about event logs files. So first of all, we could grab event logs files from Salesforce by the following ways. It could be Python script, it could be curl command, it could be direct download via event log file or uh, API call in the following format where we have instance, our service, and here is the SQL to get our logic. 
So, and also here we have also two important points. First of them, it's for creating our event log files, we should wait for 20 hours. So that means that once we connected our organization and we got any kind of event, so we will need to wait 24 hours if you will use integration via event log file. And I do not believe that it's something that we usually would like to see. So that's why this kind of implementation is not useful. So only one kind of implementation that we could implement via platform event and event data capture is usage of the HTTP event collector when we will send events directly from event trigger. But in this way, uh, we will use Salesforce platform limits for clouds to external system.